Thank you for staying with us. For many retirees, what they desire is a smooth transition from being a worker to being without work, but having enough to live by. The mandatory retirement age may vary depending on the sector and the job position, but for federal civil servants, it is 65 years. With the economic situation, some of the basic challenges faced by the retirees in Nigeria include inadequate planning and management, the exit stage, corruption at the pension board, discrimination by the society, sudden death, amongst others. Well, joining us uh, to discuss this is a retired uh, public servant and uh, panelist, 2024 National Pre-Retirement Summit. Uh, we also have in the studio, in our Abuja studio, I meant to say, former director, Bureau of Public Enterprises, Malam Ibrahim Babagana, to talk to us about this before our other guest joins us. Good morning. Thank you for joining us on The Breakfast Show. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Now, when we're talking planning for retirement, a lot of persons get to that year when they know they would retire before they begin planning for it. And then you see some level of fear uh, in their minds about uh, a future that uh, they cannot necessarily plan or they cannot even understand what happens next after spending so a major part of their productive years working. Talk to us uh, how people can plan for their retirement effectively. Thank you for um, having me. I think um, this is a very, very important and critical issue. Um, if I use my my, my experience, first of all, note that the retirement age in the, in the federal public service is 60 years. And if you really want to, um, you know, impact positively when you exit, you should always mentally and psychologically prepare yourself. Do not get encapsulated to the seat. Because at the end of the day, whether you like it or not, you are going to exit. So what it requires, first of all, is a mental paradigm shift that one day I'm going to leave the seat. Number two, I think you are not exiting from employment to non-employment. No, you should be thinking of exiting from employment, formal, which pays you adequately or inadequately, to something that you have a passion for doing. It could be selling tomatoes. It could be farming. If I take my own personal experience, I was opportune to work in one of the most leading, um, you know, uh, parastakas in Nigeria, the Bureau of Public Enterprise. And it exposed me, nationally and internationally. And five years before my retirement, I started thinking, what am I going to do when I exit? And with God's support, we were able to, when I exited, we established a metering, um, you know, assembly plan in Kaduna. I'm a current managing director at 65. And I'm enjoying what I'm doing because I have things to do, look forward to. It's challenging in terms of being in the private sector in Nigeria. But honestly and sincerely speaking, if you um, uh, look at it very critically, you will find that people that have reached a certain age in terms of public or private sector can also participate and contribute productively in doing something else. And that is what has happened in countries like Japan, for example. You will see individuals at 80 still working, still doing something they are very passionate about. I think there has to be um, some um, you know, enabling um, uh, environment and policy framework from the public and private sector to encourage this kind of exit. Thank you. But um, you're one in a few persons that were you know, privileged to be in such a position, and that's why, uh, to an extent, let's say you were able to save. What happens to uh, the other civil servants, just so we're on the same page? What are the resources so, that should so, be made so, available to the average Nigerian retiree? Yeah, I, I totally agree with you that um, the, we are not there yet in terms of the, um, uh, having an enabling uh, retirement environment in Nigeria. Um, I recall that when I was still in the BPE, we, we spearheaded the pension reforms. And it's currently being implemented whereby uh, there's the a pension framework at the end of the day for public civil servants and for that for state. 
whereby you get a stipend at the end of the year, at the end of the day, sorry. Monthly, I get paid a certain amount of money. I know it's not very adequate, it's still evolving, um, but I, I, I think that um, what can be done to, to intervene at the level of uh, state, at the level of uh, you know, um, uh, the federal government, even the private sector, because I think this is something that should be done in collaboration with the public and private sector, is to start planning the process for somebody's exit five years before he reaches his time of retirement. Provide him with instruments that he can survive out of work. Um, expose him to new skills and ideas. Create, for example, also an institution that you can get material resources and mental resources that can enable you to exit adequately. And I also think um, there's a need to improve on the overall the stipend that retirees get when they retire. That is very key and fundamental. Because as things are, if you look at the hyperinflation that we are going through in this country, which is um, something that happens on a yearly basis, they we need to revisit this particular um, you know, um, you know, uh, instrument of financial, um, you know, um, even out the financial requirements that will take people home. But that will need proper coordination and proper planning. And I think it's not something that is only limited to the public sector, but it's something that has to be done between the public and private sector. Thank you. All right. Now there's, there's a phase, or there are several phases with regards to retirement, as it is often said. I'd like for you to focus on perhaps uh, one of the phases which has to do with the disenchantment phase, where the person mentally is trying to settle, um, feels disillusioned, and uh, is still wondering how they transition from what we know as the work life into any phase, whatever it is that at the end of the day they are able to make with uh, their retirement as it is. Talk to us from your perspective, how you were able to successfully transition. Yes, you said you started planning uh, five years before you eventually retired, but then uh, mentally there's that aspect where you wake up and you're not going to work as it is. There are those who find it difficult and challenging. How were you able to mentally uh, address that aspect and stabilize? I think that is a very, very important question. And this is something that um, uh, can be um, an individual matter. I think to uh, what is critical, first, as I said earlier on, is to accept the fact that you should not be tied to the seat of power that you have or the bureaucratic seat that you occupy. You must desycologize your psychology and mind that one day I'll be out of this place. Since I'm going to be out of this place, let me first give my best to the work that I am doing. And also, there are certain instruments that have been put in place, for instance, for us, if I take my experience in the public sector, you are supposed to leave work three months to your actual terminal date. Even though that might not be adequate, but it is supposed to prepare you because people, some of us that have had busy schedules, uh, because I'm always in the office between seven and eight, I'm old school, you know, and I've done that for maybe 15 years. So I might just wake up suddenly, you know, in the morning with nowhere to go. And I will have stories of people waking up and going back to their previous offices, forgetting that they have left. To safeguard against that, you should immediately, if you don't have anything to do yet, you should have a hobby. I wake up, for instance, early. And maybe this could be considered because of the, maybe the privileges we have. I can understand that. And I recall that what I did, I'd been urged by my friends to start playing golf, for example. And immediately when I left job, my job, I picked up that particular hobby. And, and, and that takes care of my mornings between six, seven, and eight. Now for the past five years, if I'm not on the golf course, I'm doing something else productive. Thirdly, it is very critical and also important to realize that you 
need to do some forms of exercise, for example. I'm taking the soft skills, the soft issues that you need to do. Don't just sit down at home every day and think that um, the end of the world has come. You must adapt to a routine that can fill in to your busy schedule in the past. And I think most importantly, as I said, you must do something that you have passion for. You must get involved. For, for example, if you are passionate about lending your uh, skills for community service, why not do it? You know, Because what I have realized among us, because you see, during the times of my parents, they could just... I remember my father retired as a, the top civil servant in 1979. What did he do? He drove straight to Porto School. And after that, he did no more work. He became a traditional title holder and he did no more work. You know? But we have reached a stage in this 20th, 21st century modern setup that you can't afford to do that. You have to have something that can fit in your vacuum. So I, I, I totally th I think as an individual, even though you need support from agencies of government, agencies from the public sector, etc., everything starts and begins with the individual. If the individual does not realize that he needs to move on, you're going to be in big trouble. Now let's talk about um, access. Let's talk about access to the pension fund. You were able to, you know, transition from the civil service uh, to uh, become a retiree. How has it been for you, you know, accessing this fund? There have been a lot of challenges, uh, a lot of complaints, and some would argue that it's, it's better not to even, you know, wait on uh, this, uh, this fund. Okay, I think it's also a case-by-case -case issue. It's not a uniform or universal matter. Um, if I take our experience in the BPE, uh, we have a very um, strong HR department. And at the time when we had all individually um, you know, signed off to certain pension fund managers, before our retirement, about a year before our retirement, adequate um, documentation was done for us um, and for a lot of other public servants within Abuja. And immediately after that was done, at the point when we retired, we were able to, I was able to very easily access mm -hmm. about 25% of, uh, of, my, of, my, of, of what I have um, accumulated as my, as my pension um, fund over the years that it has been deducted by, 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 by my pension fund managers. And, 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 and since I retired in, in, in 2019, mm -hmm. I have been getting my, 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 my retirement funds on a monthly basis between the 16th and 17th unfailingly, without any problem. So that has been my experience. You know? Even though that I would not say that the um, resources is very, very adequate to take care of my, my, my whole needs, but at least it comes in consistently on a monthly basis. What I think needs to be done is definitely there will be bottlenecks here and there. And as I said earlier on, the pension fund management of this country is evolving. What needs to be done is all these, um, you know, um, challenges that do come up, uh, complaints that do come up, should be adequately addressed so that you can make the, um, you know, um, uh, you can you can make the life of um, retirees very very comfortable. I also think that look, there are certain things that the um, federal government or the state governments can do for retirees. For instance, now that we are retired. We are the ones who take care of our medicals, for example. There is no reason why, for instance, um, a concerted effort would be made to say that, look, if you are in a place like Abuja and you are a retiree, you can go and have some form of subsidized medical services in, for instance, government hospitals. That can be worked out. It's not anything that is very difficult. In particular, while you have served your country you know, meticulously, meticulously for a certain number of years. There is also the need to, um, uh, you know, some retirees still have something to offer. And I think that they can be engaged, not necessarily in a full capacity, but in an advisory um, capacity. People that, and, 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 and we should realize as retirees, we're not doing this because we want some form of um, reward. 
But we are doing this, for instance, as a form of getting mentally engaged. You can be called upon, for example, known based on your expertise, to now offer some form of advice in areas. Because you see, let me tell you one thing. The kind of experience that some retirees have acquired cannot be bought in the marketplace. It is something that is invaluable and it is being lost. It's not in any way being harnessed. In other countries, you find that you, you find that they create a forum where they get this kind of feedback. I'm not saying that it must be done in a manner whereby you want to now occupy uh, the position. You know, you can offer serious, concrete advice on different subject matters that can be helpful to your government, can be helpful to your community, and so forth and so on. Thank you. Of your service, you had a proper documentation of uh, every every of your information as regards uh, uh, the civil service. Anyways, what I want to ask you is: Are you saying this was an error on the part of some of the pensioners uh, not to document some of their information? Is there a problem of documentation? No, I'm not saying it's a, it's a problem of um, uh, the part of the pensioners. You get what I'm saying? You see, the pension reform, I want you to get it very clearly, um, started about 10 or 15 years ago. And, and when you look at the period that the pension reform has been on, and there are numerous different forms of accessing your pension retirement account. For those of us, I'm saying, and from our own experience, who had worked in the uh, public service and the public sector, this has been our experience. There are other in-house forms of pension um, you know, activity ongoing that is being organized by maybe the organization. It has nothing to do, it's, it's aligned to PEMCON, but they're independent. So definitely there will be challenges all over the place. You know? So I'm not saying that it's just a... Of, um, um, of, of documentation in terms of the experience of others. It could be in terms of getting paid on time, you know, because there aren't any adequate funds. It could happen. But basically what I'm saying in terms of what I have experienced, we have had a very smooth um, um, transition in terms of where we are today, in terms of accessing our, our, our pension um, you know, um, you know, funds from our pension fund managers. We have not had uh, major, I have not had any um, negative experience so far, and that's what I'm saying. But for others, yes, it's possible. I've seen it happen for pensioners where they have set up in-house pension schemes, and these pension schemes have been, have been mismanaged. You know? But that is not to say that it is the fault of um, one party. It is, you could say that it is actually the challenge and problem of those who have been given this trust to run it. That's how I see it. So what we need really is a holistic approach that will eliminate these kind of problems. With the 2024 National Pre-Retirement Summit coming up sometime, uh, in July, how this uh, will change the narrative, perhaps the policies with regards to retirement and retirees, what should they expect from this summit? Well, I, I, I decided to um, volunteer in this summit so that I can share my experience. Right. Basically, the message that this um, summit will, will project is that retirement is not a death sentence. It is actually a transition from one form of um, um, your, your, your previous existence to another interesting chapter of your life. But for that chapter, and one thing that the summit, from my own understanding, will try to project is for that to happen, uh, there must be a collaboration between the key organs of the public and private sector that will make retirement as a safety net, as a safety landing for people that have retired. You know, that is very critical because these are individuals, whether they're in the public or private sector, that had successfully reached 
the end of their career, they have spent 30 years, I have spent 30 years teaching, working as a public servant for 30 years, uninterrupted. That is more than half of your life as an individual. There is a need to make sure that that transition of what you have left on this earth is adequately utilized and you need a conducive atmosphere for that. And we need to develop that holistic strategy that will give this um, you know, um, uh, soft landing for retirees in terms of improvement, in terms of pay, in terms of adequacy to access to um, health services, in terms of giving them the opportunity to con further contribute in terms of what they have passion for, in terms of having access to, for instance, resources, material and mental, that they can utilize, in terms of giving them some certain benefits, you know, like we've done in other parts, this I think is very critical. And this, the, the, the summit will definitely come up with these key issues so that um, we think that it can be also incorporated in the agenda of the federal and state governments, in particular the federal government. The summit will also see uh, panelists, retired public servants uh, from other nations, you know, come to speak to Nigerian pensioners. What is the motive of this? Is it to address some of the gaps that we have as regards the pension scheme and uh, retirement in the country? I think it's, to, um, it's like going through a learning curve. Let me just give you a context in that. At the time when uh, the new pension scheme was being worked out by the BPE, for them to now come up with what they did today, they invited experts from all over the world. One of the case studies that was utilized was how the pension scheme was evolved and developed in a country like Chile. And what happened was, on the basis of the um, ideas that was got, we came up with the Nigerian um, pension um, you know, uh, framework, which is working very well, which has been able to uh, you know, uh, you know, accumulate billions and trillions in Naira, which has, to a certain extent, not failed for one day. You know, and I think that is a major achievement when you look at it critically. So when you now bring in other case studies, you are now looking at what they did. You are not reinventing the wheel. You are looking at the mistake they have done. You are looking at the challenges. And from there, you can now develop your own perspective that can now adapt the Nigerian socio-economic environment, you know? And that is why you, we sometimes try to engage with other parts of the world. I am not talking about a cut and paste process. I'm talking about a process whereby it's organic. You look at what they have done critically and how do we now streamline it so that it can work in terms of what we go through as a people, what we can, what, so that it can have impact in Nigeria. Because cut and paste will not, will not take you anywhere. And that is why you need case studies. For instance, I'm aware that um, a colleague of mine might be joining from China. He'll give you the Chinese experience, which will show how they have been able to take care of their aging, how they have been able to now address their retirees. I'm not a fan of um, just copying. I'm a fan of, you know, looking at things critically and then also implementing it so that it can suit the Nigerian environment. And that's why we should have more of this kind of um, interaction in terms of when we are now coming up with new policies and new okay. programs. Right. And that uh, forms my next question. Beyond this conversation, what next? Uh, it's good to have conversation, think of innovative ways. But if that is not translating into improving the lives of re retirees at the end of the day, then uh, the reason for why this is set up will not be achieved. How do you intend to push this conversation beyond just the conversation to making it a reality for the average retiree at the end of the day? I absolutely agree with you. I have, I have 
said private, privately and publicly that I'm tired of workshops because we are good at, you know, coming up on, on forums and now, um, you know, um, you know, presenting papers and so forth and so on. I, 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 I for one, um, uh, uh, think that this particular uh, program is quite unique and different in the sense that it is taking a subject matter that has been neglected for very long. You hardly see practitioners, public and private, coming out and now, um, you, know, um, uh, you know, saying that we want to do a, a program just for retirees. Because retirees are normally forgotten in this country. We are put in some, um, you know, um, some backyard. We are not being given any prominence, you know, uh, or very adequate, um, you know, um, uh, drawn into anything. Because people think, oh, you're retired, you're gone. You get what I'm saying? But, so, even for this workshop to be done, it's a major step in the right direction. Because now you are talking about a lost group that needs to be empowered. And secondly, if you look at the caliber of people that are going to attend this forum, it is attracting the top from Mr. President down to um, uh, key members of um, the cabinet, to state governments and so forth, and to captains of industry in the public and private sector. So they have to, this, this particular forum is a sensitization forum. And when you now sensitize the key policy makers, the next step is simply to adequately you know, um, articulate and capture what has been discussed and start your advocacy. Because there are a lot of competing demands um, that, uh, that face the federal government from insecurity to food to whatever you can think of. So this is one more added bill or one man added issue. And the only way that you can really succeed in doing that is to properly uh, air mark it so it is properly advocated and put across to lawmakers, to members of the executive, to members of the judiciary, public and private sector. And already we have a framework that is being uh, worked on to achieve that particular objective. So that those of us that are passionate about our lives as retirees will be in the forefront of that advocacy. And I'm sure the recommendations will be implemented. On the program. Thank you.